Hey everybody, welcome back to The Journey Channel. I'm Chelsea J, and I'm so glad you tuned in. We are focusing on defense, which is based off my book, I Am Rebuilt, which you can check on the link below, that focuses on chapter four of defense, how to have a strategy against the enemy, against Satan, and being prepared for battle, being able to fight, being able to defend. So if you believe that I am adding value to your life, please subscribe, please share, join the community, and check out the additional videos that focus on rebuilding your lives and being able to have a defense. Because my ultimate goal is to be able to provide practical principles so you can live your best life. We are in the image of Christ that we are help, that we have. Today we're going to focus on the Bible verse, John 10, 10, which says that Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but God comes to give an abundant life. So the first part is steal, that Satan wants to steal and he wants to take. He just He's just a taker and God is a giver. So just remember that in any area of life that, that Satan's ultimate goal is try to take and steal things from you. But God's ultimate goal is to give you good life, to give you abundance, to give you the promises he has for you, to give you joy, to give you peace. So Satan is a stealer, God is a giver. But we're gonna focus more on kill, that Satan wants to steal, kill, and destroy. If we look at the Greek word of kill, it says it is sacrifice or surrender. That Satan does not only want to just take from us, that he has a strategy where we begin to just surrender it to him. Sounds crazy, right? But there's a lot of times, you know, in our life where we have these thoughts that he gives us these ideas. He plants these ideas in our heads where we're thinking that we waited so long, that we believed for far too much, that we hoped for so much that, you know, things keep falling apart, that we are holding on to the God's promises, that God says it, but why is it not happening? That we're just waiting, 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 waiting. It has been five years, it's been 10 years, it's been 20 years. And he continues to put these ideas in our heads to the point where he says, why don't you just give up? And a lot of us do. Have you given up? Have you given up on your dreams? Have you given up on your desires? Have you given up on that future marriage that you want? Have you given up on that school or the education that you dream for, or that career that you wanted to do? We give it up. We surrender it all. We end up surrendering it all to him and he just ends up easily taking it. He doesn't have to kill us. He doesn't even have, sometimes have to steal it from us. We just hand it over to him. In the book of Genesis chapter 25, 24 to 34, there's a story about Esau and Jacob, which are two brothers. Esau is the one that likes to go into the wilderness and he hunts the game. He is like, you know, all about the nature and Jacob is like the homebody where he's, you know, with more with his mother cooking and handling things of the home. So Esau, he is in the wilderness, you know, working hard, trying to get the food and all these things that he's going through. And then he comes home and he is hungry. And you know, when you are hungry, you are hungry. Some of you are hangry, but he is hungry and he comes home and he wants to eat. But Jacob has a strategy in mind. He wants his birthright. Birthright is like your inheritance back in the day. What you were birthed to have, your destiny, your future. It's, it's given to the firstborn. And since Esau was the firstborn, Jacob wanted that. He wanted to have the, the, the fulfillment of, of, of the firstborn. He wanted to have the inheritance. He wanted to have the blessing. He wanted it all. Jacob has a strategy. He goes to Esau and says, I will give you this lentil soup if you give me your birthright. It sounds crazy, but you know, in the midst of being so hungry, Esau did it. He was said, I am so hungry that I could die. So then the birthright would be pointless. Give me that lentil soup. So Jacob gave him the lentil soup and he was able to take the birthright. It sounds kind of crazy, right? A little ridiculous. Like your inheritance, your blessing over some lentil soup. But I believe that this whole story relates to this culture today because how many of us are giving away something that is destined for us, something that is permanent or something of who we are for something temporary. 
How many of us are giving away our bodies for a moment of pleasure? How many of us are giving a ministry over fame? How many of us are giving away the babies in our wombs for a moment of ease? How many of us are giving away our character, what we stand for, our integrity, our rights, our values for the sake of entertainment? We are selling our birthrights for a moment of pleasure, for a moment of ease, for a moment to, to take the pain away, for the moment of, of, of entertainment, for a moment of quick happiness, for a moment of money. We quickly just we give it away like it's lentil soup. Do not make permanent decisions during temporary circumstances. We are right now in a temporary circumstance. We're in the corona. We're in the midst of whatever you are going through right now. And sometimes we are quick to make a permanent decision based off of what we see and based off of what we're dealing with. I wanna encourage you today to surrender to the eternal and provide you some practical principles on how to do that. Number one. Fix your eyes, fix your mind on the eternal. Just have the thought process as a believer that this is not your home. I have to think that daily that yes, I'm living here. Yes, I have things I want to accomplish, but it's not my home. So therefore I am here on an assignment to bring God's kingdom down on earth. So I have to figure out what God wants me to do. So I constantly have to fix my eyes on God and constantly talk back and forth to him on what his assignment is for me on this earth. And he has an assignment for you. But if we begin to fix our eyes on the eternal, the things that are everlasting, the things that are you know, gonna be permanent in our lives, the things that are going to lead us towards honoring God, to we begin to focus on no longer a temporary circumstances. Yes, they're there. Yes, it's reality. Yes, it's, you know, it's here. But if we begin to understand that, okay, yes, I don't have the finances, but you know what? My God says that he will provide my needs. Yes, I know that I'm sick, but I know that God says he will heal. Yes, I know that, that I'm hurting right now, but God says he draws near to the brokenhearted. If you begin to focus and see that, okay, this is the facts, but I'm going to rely and fix my eyes on the truth, but then you'll have a strategy against the enemy. And the second one is to align yourself, position yourself towards the standards of God. I know this one is really challenging. It's even challenging for me because, you know, we're so caught up in our own way. We want to do it our way. We have a plan that we want to do. We want to get it done. We want to accomplish. You know, sometimes we don't want to wait on God. He's taking too long. So you know what? Let me find this boo and let me handle my business. But instead we say, when we position ourselves to Christ, we say, okay, God, I know your word says that you're going to give me the desires of my heart. So I'm going to wait. And I know it takes a while, but I'm going to stand in faith because it says it in your word. So it is so. I know that the world says otherwise, that this is that this should be the way of life, that I should just, you know, do whatever I want. But I have to follow what you say because your word says you will give me an abundant life. And he wants to give you an abundant life, but he wants us to position ourselves towards him in order to do that. We have to know the word of God. I think a lot of us are relying on other people to feed us, you know, the truth of the word of God when we need to know it for ourselves because there will come a time in this life where if we do not know the voice of God, if we do not know what he says, that we're going to fall, that we're going to be deceived. There's so much stuff that's going on in the media, so much stuff going on, you know, show, social platforms that if we continue to watch it, we're going to be deceived if we do not understand what the truth of the word of God says. The time is coming and we have to be able to hear God's voice and be ready when he tells us to go and be ready when he tells us to stay. Where do you start? I encourage you to start in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It provides basic principles on how to start positioning and aligning yourself towards the standards of God. It, can, it takes discipline because you're so accustomed your way. But just take your time to really focus on saying, God, I want to be like you. So who will you surrender to? The enemy that leads to death or the God of the universe that gives you life?